The nursery in the winter time has very little to do outside. So all snow out here. But in the greenhouse we have other things going on. Let's take a look. Southern Ontario is on the 43rd parallel. About the same as the middle of Spain or Italy. That means that we have excellent light conditions for winter propagation, both for cuttings and for seeds. Seedlings are also containerized. The difference from cuttings is, of course, that when seeds scattered on the pots, it's more of a random act than anything else, so nothing in straight rows, naturally. Very much, even at this stage with the young plants, you can see a lot of difference in the seedling leaf uh, from various species and genera to each other. This pot of Linum ericeoides is about a mm, month, month and a half old, still at the very uh, young stage and you can see the seed coats are still attached to the first leaves and now they're just beginning to get the true leaves to come out. After another month or two the leaves, the true leaves really develop well and with linums and a lot of seedlings also it's important not to transplant them too early. That's one good reason for growing them in the winter in a greenhouse because you get all this slow growth conditions where they can develop roots and but develop the top slowly and then will make it a much easier transplant later. Okay here's one little seedling that's hmm, probably been out for at least two weeks very little root development but not dead still growing it was just near the top but you can see the seed coat still attached to the cotyledon leaf there and then it's immediately putting out these new true leaves it wants to grow and as the light levels improve in January into February, the growth will increase. This is Lupinus albifrons, and in this case you can see the cotyledon leaves down here. On this one they're still quite green. New leaves, true leaves, are developing quite well with a very silvery cast to them. And on this little one over here, the cotyledon leaves are disappearing, they're drying up. So they're full of sugars and all the stuff that's needed to get the seedling going and then the true leaves will take over. Like any nursery, the cuttings are laid out in a container. The difference with our nursery is everything is, uh, the plant material is all small size, so everything is miniaturized per se, but the systems really are quite similar. Cuttings are just small stems of plants stuck into a gritty medium as a rule. Sometimes we use an organic medium like peat in this case we have just simply pumice and then the stems are stuck in there and within three to four weeks they will root. When I take one out for you to see, a good brush of roots develops from the bottom of the stem and it makes it very easy for uh, transplanting. This little plant is Kennerinum gloriosum and shows the development even better. You can see the central stem here and then immediately the roots start to differentiate from the bottom. Another type of propagation used is uh, leaf cuttings. These are generally done for African violet relatives. In our case we do hardy African violets. There's three genera, the Yonkia, the Ramonda, and the Haberlia from, from Europe. These are strange looking cuttings because basically it's just really a leaf that's pulled off the plant and then from the tear at the very bottom is where the roots develop. Here you can clearly see the difference between seedlings and cuttings. The seedling has the long root with a simple meristem and a few side shoots. If you break that meristem at the bottom, the side shoots have to take over and sometimes you're in a balance where they won't do it and the plant just uh, does not thrive at all. With cuttings, you have all these side shoots and if one becomes missing it really doesn't matter. The others can easily substitute for it. Here's an ordinary pot full of gravel. What's in the bottom of it? Aha! Roots! And on these roots you can see shoots coming. This is actually a set of root cuttings of Centauria rovii that I set out you know, sometime in mid-October. They have to be kept very dry, not over water because they'll rot, and then the 
naturally make new plants on the ends of the roots. This is one of the western milkweeds from the dry steppe areas of Utah and Nevada into Oregon and California too. Asclepius cryptosurus, very beautiful flowered plant, but likes to grow in the semi-desert conditions, doesn't tolerate winter wet very well, so we keep it in the pot inside. Maybe someday we'll risk one outside. But you can see, this is the first week of January, it's starting to grow again.